Money doesn't grow on trees, but in guitar, it just might. How else are we supposed to explain its mind-numbling wealth? From the famous Qatar Airways that travels to over 150 destinations to expensive hotels around the world, but not one, but two of the most expensive paintings in the world, and even owning the famous London Shard. Qatar might be the center of wealth in the world, and by the looks of it, they have no plans to back down. So how exactly did the land of camels become a staple of wealth and luxury? Find out as we dive into the history of how Qatar became insanely rich. For most people, when Qatar is mentioned, the first thing that comes to mind is the 2022 World Cup. Qatar is the first Arabic country to host the World Cup like that's not enough. It's also the smallest country to ever host it and the first to do so while being totally carbon neutral. So how does the state of Qatar celebrate this accomplishment? Well, they go ahead and build seven stadiums, new airports, a metro system, multiple roads, and about 100 new hotels. The country basically made a city to celebrate the World Cup. The crazy part is they did it out of their own pockets, spending about $500 million per week on World Cup infrastructure alone. So it's safe to say, Qatar is the home of wealth. But why? To answer this question, we need to go all the way back to 1971, when Qatar gained its independence from the UK. At this point, the country had one of the poorest economies in the Middle East to survive. The economy relied heavily on the fishing industry, but it was clearly not enough at the time. So how did a poor fishing country grow to become one of the richest in the world based on GDP per capita? Well, it's actually quite simple. Qatar found that the country was rich in the black liquid that made the human race function. It was rich in oil and gas. Initially discovered in 1939, oil production in the country skyrocketed by 1973, effectively boosting its economy and removing it from the list of the world's poorest countries. Today, petroleum and natural gas are the cornerstones of Qatar's economy. They account for more than 70% of total government revenue, more than 60% of gross domestic product, and roughly 85% of export earnings. Qatar has now become the world's third largest proven natural gas reserve and is the second largest exporter of natural gas. Now, I bet you're wondering, is it really that easy? Does having oil instantly mean your country will be wealthy? Well, the short answer is no, and as for the long answer, well, having oil and natural gas does not automatically translate to wealth. In fact, it may even hinder wealth by leading to an increase in corruption levels, particularly in the government, as seen in the oil-rich country of Nigeria. So what made Qatar different? Why does it stand out for its wealth? That, my brother, is quite simple. As Qatar was not only blessed with valuable oil and natural gas, the country also knew how to manage and use it essentially so well, in fact, that the country is now home to countless millionaires. Today, Qatar is the largest open economy in the Middle East. This means that the country engages in the most trade with other countries. These include technology, managerial exchanges, property trade, and oil and gas trade. So how did this tiny city do it? See, Qatar's first oil field was discovered in the 1940s, but did next to nothing to transform the country. By the 1970s, the country had found its largest gas field and its most significant asset, the North Field. The North Field, located offshore the northeast Qatar Peninsula, is the world's largest gas field, covering approximately 6,000 square kilometers. Although discovered in 1971, the gas field held upwards of 900 trillion standard cubic feet of recoverable gas reserves equivalent to about 10% of the known reserves in the world. Unfortunately, oil was not in high demand then because gas was only transported via gas pipelines. To add salt to an already saddening wounds, Qatar was located far from places where natural gas was in high demand, so soon enough, the country forgot about its enormous gas fields. But all was not lost because in 1996, the Emir Hamid bin Khalafi Al Thani observed his father from the throne while he was in Switzerland, and this one move would lead to the birth of the modern Qatar we know and envy today. During his reign, Qatar returned to the gas fields and natural gas production reached 77 million tons, 
making Qatar the most prosperous country in the world per capita with an average annual income of 86,440 US dollars. But how did they solve the gas pipe problem? Many would have assumed Qatar built more pipes to help spread its gas worldwide, but they didn't. Instead, they began to invest in technology that could liquefy the natural gas, which would then enable it to be transported as quickly as its lucrative counterpart, crude oil. But to do this, Qatar had to freeze the gas, which was quite a Herculean task at the time. Still, Qatar persevered and continued to pump money and time into creating the technology to turn their natural gas into their greatest asset. Soon enough, Qatar had done it. Not only did they find a way to liquefy natural gas, but they also found a way to do so cost-effectively. So much so that the country has one of the lowest extraction and liquefaction costs worldwide, allowing it to make huge profits at meager prices. Now Qatar was ready to do business. The country exported its natural gas to the world, with most of it going to Asian economies like Japan, South Korea and China. This export essentially set Qatar aside from the rest of the world. It quickly skyrocketed to become one of the most prosperous economies in the Middle East. So now that Qatar is rich, you'd think it's time to spend and enjoy luxury. But the country had other plans. See, they knew oil and gas were a very volatile source of revenue, so they saved the money and began to invest it around the world. In 2005, the country launched the Qatar Investment Authority, whose primary aim was to invest the money it got from oil revenues across the world to make its economy more resilient and reduce its dependency on oil. And boy, did this plan work because as of 2022, the Qatar Investment Fund was worth a whopping $360 billion and had invested globally in many asset classes such as real estate, public companies and currencies. This global investment strategy changed the game. It was what set Qatar apart from the rest of the world. It was the country's saving grace. The craziest part of this growth was that it not only grew the country's economy, but also grew its global influence. So much so that it even became a concern to Middle East giants like Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Although the country started from impoverished origins, Qatar has shocked the world with its growth. It is now one of the world's most envied countries, boasting of luxury, culture and, of course, resilience. To the point where it is the first Arabian country to host a World Cup. It continues to amaze the world as the country shows no sign of slowing down. Qatar is generally the underdog country that stole the show and is an inspiration to multiple resource-rich countries in the world that good leaders are essential and a stitch in time truly saves nine. What do you think about the Qatar story? Do you believe other countries will follow suit? And what country do you want to see next? Let us know in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe for more amazing videos. Until next time, bye.